So Naman, it's you that wants to get into McMaster's medical school, right? Or is it you that wants to get into McMaster Medical School? I want to get into McMaster's Medical School. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Well, you've all come to the right place. We're going to give you all the information that you need to get into the medical school of your dreams. We also made a U of T guide and a Queen's Medical School guide, so check those out. And we have four more videos coming up for all the other medical schools in Ontario. So stay tuned, subscribe, and let's get into the video. First, let's go over the 2020 to 2021 admission stats, since the past year actually hasn't been made available. For this cycle, 5,868 applicants applied, and out of which 600 were interviewed and 205 went on to be accepted. That's around a 3.5% acceptance rate. And before you freak out, don't worry because we're gonna go over everything you need to know about the application process. However, I will say that you should watch till the very end because McMaster Med School is probably one of the hardest med schools to get into based on how they select their applicants. Before we go further into the video, I'd like to give you a disclaimer that we're not involved with the McMaster Med admissions process and that all the information we're providing is based on our own research and our own experience. Without further ado, let's now move into the first part of the admissions process, how to get an interview. McMaster University's medical school is also called the Groot School of Medicine and it's also one of the most unique MD programs because it has three campuses in Ontario, Niagara, Waterloo and Hamilton. Hamilton is the biggest campus but Niagara and Waterloo are much smaller classes so it can be much more intimate. McMaster is a three-year MD program. That means you only get four weeks off in the entire year. You can say goodbye to your summer because you're only going to get two weeks for that. However, it does save a lot of money and you get out of medical school a year earlier than your counterparts. One thing you should absolutely know about Mac is that their entire curriculum is based on problem-based learning or PBL. It's basically a small group of students that are given a clinical case. You work with your group to solve this clinical case. And if you don't know certain details about the case, you can consult online resources. Don't worry, the staff is still going to be there to guide you through the process and help you. Now that you know a little bit about Mac, let's dive into the academic requirements. McMaster Med is probably one of the most transparent medical schools in terms of how they offer students an interview. What they do is they equally weigh your GPA, your MCAT cars, and your CASPER scores and compare that to other applicants. Each of these three components will be weighed 32%, which totals to 96%. So you may be wondering where the other 4% goes. So if you're a master's student, you get a 1% bonus. And if you're a PhD student, you get a 4% bonus. So if you've done well on your MCAT and gotten a good CAR score, you've gotten a good CASPER score, and you have a good GPA, you can almost certainly expect an interview. So you may be wondering, Naman, what about ABS and references? Well, it's funny you should ask because Mac doesn't seem to care about ABS or references when it comes to their selection criteria. But, but, these two things are very important for other medical schools, so don't take them lightly. Let's dissect McMaster's selection criteria. The first thing is GPA. The class of 2024 had an average GPA of about 3.88 which is actually a lot lower than other med schools in Ontario, like U of T and U Ottawa. The reason this is the case is because McMaster looks at your cumulative GPA, whereas U of T and U Ottawa, they take different formulas when it comes to calculating your GPA. However, when we compare the CARS scores, which is another selection criteria factor for McMaster, the average CARS score of an accepted applicant for Mac is 129, and this is a lot higher than other med schools. I know this is really high, but people have gotten in with lower scores. While McMaster hasn't reported CASPER scores in the past, based on anecdotal evidence that we've seen on forums and based on other experiences, almost everyone that got a McMaster Med interview had a fourth quartile CASPER score. Comment down below if you had something lower, and that'd be really interesting to find out more about. If they do release new scores this year and they include the CASPER scores, We'll be sure to post that on our TikTok page, so please follow that if you want to stay updated. That pretty much sums up how Mac looks at your application before the interview. Now, if you're fortunate enough to receive an interview invite from McMaster's Medical School, that's where the difficult part starts. The invites are sent out in January. So, what's Mac's interview like? 
It's actually a common format called the multiple mini interview or MMI for short. In the MMI, you're basically given a series of stations where you're presented with questions or scenarios and your answer will be evaluated by a single interviewer. You might not have known this, but McMaster actually made MMI along with Casper. The MMI usually takes place in late March. With all these interviews shifting online, it's hard to tell whether they're going to keep it asynchronous or live. It kind of depends year after year, and it really depends on the medical school. Either way, you should be prepared for both and just prepare as hard as you can. You might be wondering what kinds of questions Mac asks. And here's a question, for example. <laughs> so yeah, did you get that? Okay, perfect, let's move on. After you're done with the interview, McMaster has a post-interview formula that they use to select successful MD candidates. So 70% of your score comes from the MMI or the interview, 15% comes from your GPA, and 15% comes from your cars. As you can tell, we cannot see much importance being put on to the ABS or the references based on the formula, but please don't take them lightly because we're sure they're factored in somewhere else. Now, all you have to wait for is D-Day, the day when all of your acceptance emails come out, which usually falls on the second Tuesday of May. So you really thought we weren't getting a guest on the video? <laughs> Not a chance. We have the man, the myth, the legend, the person who gave us all the advice when we were applying to medical school. It's Jin Luca from Next NMD's YouTube channel. If you guys don't already know who Jin Luca is, he's a first year family medicine resident at McMaster and he also completed his MD at McMaster's medical school. So we'll be asking him some questions for you guys. So welcome to the Next Gen MD times Med Boys collab. Hey everyone, it's nice to meet you. Quick shout out to the Med Boys for having me on your channel today. My name is Gianluca, aka Dr. Calcagno, and I'm a first year family medicine resident here in Canada. And uh, you guys are getting me right now at the hospital. We are on call tonight, and it's a little bit of a downtime before it picks up in a little bit too. Here till 10. Um, other things you guys should know about me, I have a YouTube channel, uh, Next Gen MD over there. And I am a recent graduate of the McMaster Medical School, which I think is the reason why these fine gentlemen asked me to come on today. So we've got a series of questions over here. The first one is why did I want to go to McMaster Medical School? And I've spoken about it a few times in the past, but McMaster really was my number one choice when I was applying to medical school four years ago at this point. So it was a long time ago now. Um, and, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when I applied, I wanted to go to McMaster, but I applied everywhere, all across Ontario. It's because really when it comes to admissions, you are just trying to get in and make yourself as competitive as possible. But I really loved two different things about McMaster. Number one, that it was a three-year medical program that went through the summers. And I really liked the concept of being able to do all of my education consecutively so that I wasn't forgetting things over the summer. And that also I got out a year early and I was able to see a little bit of money as well. The other part that I really liked about the three-year program was that I thought the environment that they had at the different campuses was really good and that they started us off getting into clinics and getting into an actual medical environment in the hospitals and in outpatient community settings very, very quickly. And I really like that about the McMaster program too. Now, PBL comes from problem-based learning. That's what it stands for. And basically it is the contrast to the traditional didactic system of learning. And in that system, what happens is that you go to class and you get lectured and you have to memorize different notes and they tell you the information that you're gonna to need to study for the test. But in the PBL system, you are given cases at tutorials. And what you're going to be doing with these cases are exploring them with your groups. You'll break down a story patient presentation that they give you and you create your own learning objectives within the story it really helped me personally to identify real world situations and make connections to things that i actually want to know about the patient when i met them in real life personally i was not good at pbl when i first got into the program I think that a lot of people have difficulties making the adjustment from didactic to PBL in the beginning. But when you are able to follow along with it, I thought that it was very, very helpful in terms of learning the objectives, the learning objectives that we needed to get through in medical school and ultimately help me pass my exams. For me personally, I thought the three-year program was great. I think it was the perfect fit for me as a student. I am the type of person that likes to get things over and done with rather than drag them out. And when someone told me way back when, when I first started medical school, that I was going to be able to take an entire year off my total length of time training to be a doctor, because you're already in school for so, so long, um, I was excited for it. And I knew that it was going to be a challenge. Trying to do something that's normally four years in only three years time means that you are going to work pretty hard 
in short bursts of time and then over a long stretch as well. But I think that it worked out really well. I also think that when you don't take the time off in the summer, you're always in it and it helps you to keep everything compartmentalized and fluent. It's when you enter a clinic environment after being in it for three years, like now that I'm in the hospital, and it just feels to me like an extension of the stuff that I've already been doing, except now I'm a doctor and there's more responsibilities with that, but I really like the three-year program. This one's tricky and I wish I had a better answer for you, but the thing that got me into medical school was ultimately my MCAT score. It was my CAR score. I got a 131 and my CASPER score must have been very high as well because my GPA at the time when I was accepted was a 3.63. I also think that I had a really, really strong interview performance. I had a lot of extracurriculars and things on my application, but for the McMaster application, they didn't really help me. I also got an interview at Queens, and then we could talk about all the extracurriculars that I had and things that I did outside of schooling, but I really think that fundamentally, and unfortunately, especially in Canada, if you want to succeed, you need those extracurriculars, but then you also need that academic background as well, and the MCAT section, the CAR section especially, is such an important factor in determining who will get an interview. Now my favorite part about McMaster Medical School is the last thing I'm going to say because then after I am going to probably eat some dinner and get a snack and get back to work, um, is that I had a lot of fun at the medical school. I, I, you hear different things talking to different people and definitely everyone is allowed to say what their experience was like in medical school. But when I hear some of my colleagues from other centers and just other people's experience with medical school, some people talk about it as a very unfortunate, difficult, personally challenging experience. And medical school is very challenging. It is a time that you're testing yourself. But I had a really great time in medical school as well. I met some amazing friends. I got to do some really amazing things, the things that I thought was amazing anyways. And uh, I wouldn't change that time really for anything. I, I thought that it was a character building um, experience. And I don't know if I would have had the same experience anywhere else except for McMaster. In terms of specifics, you gotta just go to the campus, go to the different campuses, look these things up yourself, and everyone's going to thrive best in a different environment. I even think that personally, I would have been able to thrive in a few different environments, but I'm really glad that I chose or was accepted to get into McMaster. They accepted me. And uh, I'm really excited now to, to keep working as a doctor. And uh, my final thoughts on this is guys, thank you for having me on here today and great work with the videos that you do. And I'm really glad to see that there are other people starting to get all of this information out about the Canadian pre-med scene. I wish everyone the best at applying and uh, boys, I'll toss it back to you. And there you have it. That's how you get into McMaster Medical School. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and check out our other videos on how to get into U of T, U Ottawa, and Queens as well if you're interested.